myself. And I find another section in that book that tells me money answer all things. Yes, yeah, some of you believe that. Money answer all things. You give thanks better when you know that the billy have money in it. Am I right or am I right? You, your, your demeanor is better when you know that the bills have been paid. And you know that everything is all right. Are you with me? And so we find that physical education and sport is an avenue to make it economically well. It's all right. Are you with me? Yeah, man. And so we need to transfer, communicate this to the learners. Some of us have actually been here a little longer than the rest. And because of that, we would have attained some wisdom. Yeah? And the upcoming generation don't know some of the stuff them that we know. And sometimes we discover some stuff late in life. But if you are still here, it still means that your role would have not yet expired. You are to inspire them so that they know that they can make it economic, economically, physical education and sport. Sports tourism. Yeah? Professional you choose it as a professional career choice. The, the, the money that comes in cannot only transform your life, but your extended family members and their extended family and so forth. And so it is an avenue out. Are you with me? Bless God from Zion. Some folks will never be a medical doctor. No, sir. They will never be a medical doctor. And it's not that they are smarter than the person who holds a bat or a ball. But it is the way that we were designed. Yeah? But we will tap into that. Moving right along. John Dewey. Those of you who are in, heavily involved in education, the education side of the academics will remember him. And they call him the father of philosophy. Yeah? And um, we know that it said their education is, is life itself. Hmm? No, there are different philosophies that guide our educational practices. All right? Uh, I think we, 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 you can move on. You, 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 you will have your time to, to look at that. All right. But... Oh, I didn't want to go here first. Move up, let me. Uh, since I move up, move up, move up, move up, move. All right. Maybe this slide before this. Go to the slide. Go, go, no. Move up, move up, move up. Move up. Let me hope it is still there. Uh, move up again. We'll get back to you. Move up again, quickly. Moving, moving, man. And I tell you when they stop. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Go back to the, go back to the, the thing there. Go back, go back to the pragmatism slide. So John Dewey, there are different educational philosophers, philosophies. We talk about pragmatism. We talk about naturalism. We talk about realism, existentialism. You name it. Those are educational philosophies that guide how we operate in our everyday field. But for us as practitioners, I believe that pragmatism is the one that affects us most. And so pragmatism as a philosophy deals with a practical approach to solve problems. Anybody ever analyze let me talk to a netball specialist in the field. And I can pick on her. I, I can pick on her. She, boy, she traveling some boating to get here. She's a neighbor of Trinidad and Tobago. Yes. And, and she's our friend. But let's talk about netball. Whenever your netball team is not as successful as you wanted them to be, you analyze 
And many times we find that the defender or the shooter finds herself confronting a defender that is taller than, are you with me? So you find that the, the shot under the hoop is going to be difficult because the, the defender just does this. Are you with me? So the pragmatic approach, he said the decision making, if you stay far from the hoop and shoot, then the defender might not get to you for your arm thing. Are you with me? The lobber, which is our wing, at, um, wing attack, her purpose is to deliver the ball to the shooting circuit. Am I right or am I right? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Chat ball. So, so the wing attack must master a pass that we call the lob pass. Any netball in the house? When the lob pass is executed correctly, talk to me, it lands safely in the chest region of the receiver. Are you with me? And if the shooter know what I'm supposed to do, I'm positioned right. Talk to me. Then, no matter how good the defender is, that ball gains score. Talk to me now, man. Do we know net ball in the house? So we are saying that Sometimes the challenges that face our athletes in competition must be solved in a pragmatic approach. Some of the solutions are not written in any textbook. I pause here to acknowledge the superwoman. She have arrived. <laughs> yeah. So we have the superwoman and we have Wonder Woman. <laughs> Superwoman deal with 500 and had students. And Wonder Woman deal with 800 and had students? God. But, but I interviewed the Superwoman yesterday. You know, and you know what is consistent? Superwoman says, I have a bungle of energy. Yeah, man. And she loves what she does. Are you with me? Yeah, man. So, so, you know that we have to love what we do? All right. So, we, 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 back to the play. Problem solving. It happens not only in netball. Football. Coaches and lay, lay persons say, in decision making skill poor, you know, make the right decision. Are you with me? But it's all about the philosophical approach. How do we approach it? You have to teach your athletes, train them, train them to solve problems that might just pop up on them. The time that we are living in now, with modern technology, there is no tactics that is hidden from anybody. So I'm going to play Spain tomorrow morning. There is a whole bunch load of information about Spain. Are you with me? You have to take that in as a coach, assimilate this, and you have to get your players to understand that even though this is there about Spain, there is still something about Spain that is not there. What do you mean? If, say that loud, man. Chew! So when you... When you turn up, say, but, 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 but them did say, them, them, them using 442 and God Almighty, a 433. How, how do you deal with this? Are you with me? You have to plan for that. What happened when your superstar gets injured and can't play? Scratch injured. What happens when your superstar disrespect you and you have to enforce Discipline and have to say, sit down on the bench and watch this. How does these things affect the performance of the others? You have to have a philosophy that is entrenched in them in order to make the difference. 
I was speaking with one of my colleagues, Mr. Steve Davis, this morning. And, and he says, and I concur, there's a difference between practice and training. And the, man, the, the man just roll off him things. And, 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 me just, and me just soak it up like a sponge. Yeah. So I can say, training involves an holistic approach. It involves all the theoretical knowledge of the subject matter. It involves all that we do in preparation. Did I say war? No. War. And this, no, you transfer that on the field. But you can't just wait till you are engaged on the day. This has got to be a part of the process. So when you practice the skill to dribble and to shoot and all and all of them, eh? training just link everything together. And if you are not, if you have not been training, you are preparing to face a long time before you see some glory. Are you with me? So we have to train the athletes. Train. And you, the trainer, needs a philosophy that tells you that if it don't work this time, you're going to tweak something and it will work the next time. Are you with me? And you have to be consistently hammering and hammering. Are you with me? And, and once you do that, whatever problems jump up on you, you are in a position to solve. And you will transfer this to your learners and so they can fend for themselves. Are you with me? All right. You can look at what we have. We talk about field changes, how you set up a relay team, who starts, who does the second leg, who does the third leg, and all of that. I think uh, Mr. Marlon Gill, when he goes into that, he will dive down into that as one of the current practitioners and experts in, in, in those fields. But you must be able to think for yourself. Are you with me? Yeah, think for yourself. All right? Develop your own style. Make your own motto. Boy, I love this, man. I, I, I love this. Ain't nobody do it like you do. You have to believe in yourself. Create your own thing. Welcome. He seems like another alien. Don't, don't fret, don't fret, don't fret. We, 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 we're good like that. I'm called the great one. <laughs> Who are you? Zerel eh? Edwards. Zerel Edwards. You sure you're in the right place? Yeah. Where you wanted to be? Right here. I was sent to. This? You wanted to be here? Yeah. You know what we deal with? We deal with some deep stuff, you know, man? <laughs> You, you can handle that? Yeah. All right. You're in the right place. Yeah, yeah. Listen, man. You can't let folks just creep in on your session like that. You have to be alert. There might be a spy. <laughs> yeah. so, so you got to check them out. You, you're sure in the right camp? Yeah. All right. If he's a spy, no. We don't talk about pragmatism and tactical things while he's in the room. We, 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 we tell him that, hey, you do the same thing the same way, and we bring up Pinky and the brain, and you say, hey, what are we going to do? Same thing we do yesterday, and same thing. And then when he leaves the room now, you say, all right, all right, come back. Let's get back to pragmatism, solving problems, not doing things the same way. Welcome. You're in the right place. Yeah, a seat on his, a seat on him. Physical education, you see? Physical education, you must have a sense of awareness, yeah? So you observe things, you recognize things. Do you know you know when the information is going in? Yeah, man. But you don't make people trick you. Sometimes they're steadfast looking at you, and you think they're taking everything. You just throw them a question. And test them on the spot. And, and you find out, say, boy, you need another touch. And, and you just, you must always have a reverse button. You, you know what the reverse button do? It goes back. And anytime it reaches the part that you did not understand, you just raise your hand and we stop. Chuck, 
and we'll do it again till you get it because the job is not to finish. The job is to ensure that you get it. Everybody still with me? Develop your own style, man. Make your own motto. I can do all things. Give me a motto. Think about it, everybody, because I might be asking you. Think about a personal motto, something that works for you. Most schools have different mottos. And while I speak about one, I remember a school in Jamaica called Cornwall College High School. Them have the baddest and greatest motto on the planet, I swear. I share it with you. It name, learn or leave. But, you, you know, th there is something that I don't know. I, I think maybe, I, I might need some guidance here. When I'm having my lectures sometime, you know, and I talk, I notice that folks just laugh. And I'm saying, but why are they laughing? And I'm on some serious things. And I'm laughing. And so I, I am thinking about stand-up comedy sometimes. <laughs> All right? But, 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 but moving right along. It's not a joke. The motto is learn or leave. So when the student enter, then brainwash them with this. I am here to learn. And if I can't learn, I will not waste the administrator's time. I will not waste my parent's time. I will not waste my teacher's time. I'll just leave. It's learn or leave. We, 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 we talk about See, see, see another one? Yes, it's there. Learn or leave. Cornwall College. Somewhere in Montego Bay in Jamaica. Deeds are not chat. I think the Latin verse are facta non verba. Yeah. We talk about, we have a young lady now in Budapest. Sasha Lee. Short little thing from Manchester. And she went to Homewood. And Homewood motto is... No only for bag of chat. Action. Action. And then peer themselves like that. When they go to, to champs or any competition, even if them hurt, them out there. Mm. Grin and bear it. Action and not chat. And that becomes a part. We, we, we have a school in, 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 in Jamaica named Kingston College. Male school. Predominantly male. And we've got to take care of the males. Do you know that males function different from the females? Yeah. So we have to cater for all that, the type of learning side. But their motto, the brave may fall, but never yield. Bless God from out of Zion. And, and when, the king, when, the, when, when, the, when the KC fellas competing, and they're hurt and all of them things, they have to get a point. And it's as if they drag themselves across the line. They do. We are going to experience different obstacles and disappointments in life. But don't let that knock you down. Anybody know boxing? Every now and again, you know, you get a hook. And boy, it's a solid hook. Knock out the window to you. And then there, there comes the, is, is it referee or umpire? You, you decide. But all I know is that. One, still down. Two, still down. Three, fast forward. Nine. But just as the tenth count is going to come, boy, it's hung us up. Mm. Why did you get up? The brave may fall, but never yield. Are you with me? So you keep getting up. The job that you're on, it's going to be difficult. Are you with me? But do not allow the, you, you know who, who is doing the counting? Your criticizers. You ever meet some folks smiling with you? And you just read, well, I come from Zion, you know, so I can read people, man. And even though you're smiling with me, man, I read your heart. Man, your heart is telling me, I want him to fail. Eh? Stay there. You're going you're gonna to die before you see me fail. Mm. You have to have that type of mentality. And sometimes that comes from the motto. That which you decide to embrace and adopt. 
to drive you every single day. Anybody still with me? Yeah. Anybody have a motor yet? Yeah, talk to me. Nothing venture, nothing gain. Sure. Nothing venture, nothing gain. You know, you know what I get from that? We not afraid to fail. Because failure is an experience that can lift you to the next level. Anybody here ever hear the thing about WD-40? WD-40? Man want to build this thing to release grease or rust. Bam him try this time, mmm, fail. Bam him try another time, mmm, fail. Bam him try another time, mmm, fail. And while he's, while he's there trying, there's a cloud of witness. Crowd of criticizers looking on. Yes, he's gonna fail. He's not gonna get up. But he got up 39 times. And on the 40th time, mm, man hit jackpot. Anybody here gamble? Sure. <laughs> Every time you buy a lot of ticket, boy, I miss it by one. Keep on buying. D did I say keep on? Keep on trying. I'm not telling you to gamble as you know. Keep on trying. So WD 40. 39 times we try. We can't fail. Nothing venture, nothing gain. Anybody want to do some economics? All right. Quickly, because we're moving, you know, we're moving. The man that plant or invest $40 million versus the man that invest $2, it's profit sharing time. Mmm. -hmm. The man that invests a couple dollars, when him see him interest, him get disappointed. And say, but this can't sustain life. You're right. But talk to the man that invested 40 millions. Boy, when it's dividend time, feel him dividend can sustain him for one 10 year span. Are you with me? Nothing venture, nothing gain. And that is not your motto. This is yours truly. Are you with me? Everybody must have. Do you have one? Uh, all hard work has reward. Man say all hard work have reward. Anybody believe that? Well, if you don't believe that, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. So you're a coach. Yeah. And training start 4 o'clock. There are two coaches. Training start 4 o'clock. And at 6 o'clock, one of the coaches no reach. But one of the coach reach 3 o'clock. What time training start? 4 o'clock. And him there from 3 and him prepare and him work hard. And when him go to him bed, him have problem with wife or husband. Because him still a think about training. Him still a put in some stuff training and then competition day the other one reach home not even reach home because him go to the bar and amusement park and him just enjoy himself and him call him second and him say what going over training and he said training all right but and he move on and when him the home someone say so you're not gonna work no everything under control come competition day bless god from zion one team win gold medal and one to pass the first round what is the difference what did you say Hard, hard work pays off. It's called sowing and reaping. Lazy, lazy coach have no success to reap. You better believe that. It's what you put in that you're going to get out. Develop your own style and philosophy. All right? Moving right ahead. Everybody get that? Huh? Major contributors of physical education and sport. Plato. Yeah, that little fellow over there, the, the researchers tell me that that image belonged to him. Whether the image belonged to him, yes or not, a Plato that. Anybody with me? Greek philosopher, student of Dr. Socrates. And Socrates is a brother of a fem fem style, you know. When him asks you a question, when you ask Socrates a question, him just asks you back a question. 
and him just keep on. So the answer and the response have to come from you. Kind of like what the counselors do when you pay your money to go to them. You know, you, you, well, you, didn't, you didn't think about that. When you go to a counselor, you pay the counselor to hear yourself. It's the truth. Why am I, why tell you, man? So Socrates does that. But Plato, he was one of them founders, founding fathers of education. Plato believed in education. Plato believed in organized system of learning. Plato believed that the instructor must be learned. Plato believed that play is necessary for the development of humans. Plato believed that you can't just leave your children to careless individuals. Are you with me? So he's an influential figure in physical education. Pierre de Coubertin, we all know about him. That French brother that saw so much value in sports that when they decided to stop the, the ancient Olympics because of corruption and all of them things, Pierre de Coubertin decided that, no, we can't lose this. This is too valuable. And so he reintroduced the Olympic movement. And he became known as the father of the modern Olympic movement. Major contributor to physical education and move. Plato believed in this lady's motto. No venture, no gain. And he ventured in, and he now has become a legend, etch forever in the history of physical education and sport. Shelley Ann Fraser Price. Hey, can you see her wig? Though I'm looking. Yeah, yeah, we like the color here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We like that. And, and I met, there was another lady here, you know, that, that, ooh! We like the purple there. And, uh, yeah. So some ladies are wig persons. Are you with me? But that's not their philosophy. Take your eyes off of the people, them wig. You, sure. Leave the people, them wig alone. They, they look beautiful. In, but Shelley and Fraser Price, unlike a Usain Bolt, yeah? She's from the flatlands. When Shelly Ann went to champ championship, she never excelled as. But guess what? She persisted. She practiced. She trained. And the next thing you know, boy, there's a thing with Shelly. When Shelly made the first national team, you know, one of Jamaica's legend, the world legendary, Vernica Campbell Brown. That time, she didn't have a brown on her name. She was just Vernica Campbell. Vernica never make it. And you know what they wanted to do? They wanted to take Shelley's spot and give the more decorated. You know them thing. Ruption. But Stella stood her ground, and Shelley Handler stood her ground. The rest now they say is history. One of our most, and I think the entire world's most dangerous, can we use dangerous? Dangerous female sprinter. So she can now become a beacon of hope to all young ladies across the entire world. Are you with me? Because it's not that she has so much super things. But she worked. So she's a major contributor. She's, she, she's now the door for a number of ladies to enter in. Can we move ahead? Ah, Herb McKinley. We're going to skip over Herb McKinley because, you know, he's it, Jamaican. Thing. One of the patriarchs of the, our sprinting, sprinting legacy. But we fast forward to, anybody know that fella there? The, the, the one that torso is really big. The ladies know that because I can't see no man torso. <laughs> my, my eyes kind of wire funny, but, but, but the ladies can see it. Yeah, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah. So, he's Ottoman. Can I say he's our own? Yeah, you said it. He's our own. He's our own. And I own him. Because whenever I'm watching the Olympics, yes, I cheer for Jamaica real hard. But if Jamaica not in there, me look for the next best. 
And if him come from Trinidad, he's mine. If he's from the Barbados, he's mine. If he's from the, 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 the St. Vincent in Grenadine, he's mine. Are you with me? So, so he's ours. And he has done exceedingly well. And as a matter of fact, not only is Otto a great athlete, but Otto is also a great coach. Anybody ever hear of a, a young lady one time named Brianna Williams? Eh? That's Otto's baby, man. Are you with me? Good guy. And so he's a major contributor. So citizens from this place can look to him and say, why not only is there alone, you know? but we have an Otto as well. Anybody with me? And God knows that the male of the species needs some real example to look on. Are you with me? And, and so, and we talk about Inz. I didn't put Inz's um, picture there because we are right in his place. And, and, and he's right down there. So if you didn't know him, just go downstairs and, you keep, and, you, and he's right there staring at you. A gold medalist. Man, and it don't get higher than that. When you win an Olympic gold medal, it does not go higher than that in the field of tracks, track and field. All right? Brian Lara. Man is a batting genius. Boy, you know, I, did I tell you about when I was in the belly? I, I, yeah, man, when I was in the belly, man, and me a kick and, and all of them little things there and I move up, eh? Brian Lara was inside here. Go ahead, Jai. Are you with me? I'm dry. Brian Lara was doing all of that. So when Brian Lara jump out, man, one man jump out a genius. Are you with me? Boy, and he's one of our own all over the world. When, when the man passed through, man, he's almost like a, a king. But he's a king in his own right. Royalty a passed through. Are you with me? Yes. And he has inspired a lot of hope. Anybody still with me? Major contributor. But before we even go on to the, the benefits that we have, look at yourself. Look at yourself. We're going to do a a, 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 a pragmatic exercise. Touch your chest. Yeah, man, touch yourself. I am a major contributor of physical education and sport. I am a major contributor of physical education and sport. Watch me now. You better be careful, you know, because you say if you don't mean it, no say it. <laughs> but if you mean it, say it again. I am a major contributor of physical education and sport. Yama. Because anything, anything you say, you shall have what you say. And then we just work on it. And so we say benefits of physical education and sport. Self-discipline. Bless God from Zion. One of the key to success. It helps you once you can discipline yourself. Hmm? It will enable you to access success. Are you with me? As a major contributor of physical education and sport, you have to discipline yourself. Yeah? Become a disciple of physical education and sport. What I am saying to you is that you must discipline yourself. Discipline yourself to exercise. Discipline yourself to choose the right nutrition. Discipline yourself to do the right things. Discipline yourself to learn to win without cheating. Discipline yourself. And trust me, success can't miss you. That's one of the benefits that physical education and sport teaches. Are you with me? Health. Bless God from Zion. When you are engaged in physical activity, you remain healthy. Diabetes and some lifestyle illness stay far from you. You know how them illness want to circle around you? Them circling around because they want to attack you, but, but because you're a physical education specialist and you know to keep the thing jiggy, boy, them just keep off. Them just keep off. Mm, want to attack, but ooh, can't touch this one. It's almost like a protective layer around you. Are you with me? So the benefits is humongous. Anybody know that when you're physically fit, you're, you're happier than everybody else? Yeah, man. 
because it, 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 it releases endomorphin, the, the feel-good thing inside of your, your brain, and you just feel happy. You know, you can get addicted to drugs. You can also get addicted to exercise. You know why you get addicted to exercise? Because of the feel-good factor. Yeah, you want to keep that high, so you just always have to hit the gym. Woo! God Almighty. And I'll tell you something. Exercise, when you feel good, you know, and you know what you're doing, you know, man. You wear a smile on your face. You know, it's important to wear a smile on your face. When you wear a smile on your face, people will approach you. If you ever see some real serious concern, mm, we're not going there. But when you smile, it melts down doors of partition. And it, and it say, come on, I'm approachable. What is it? Can I help you? I am able to help you. Physical exercise does that, man. We can't top talk about money. But we're going to leave the economics out of it because we're in Trinidad. And, and Trinidad have money. Everybody say money. Yeah, man. Money. Yeah, man. So, so, so we're going to leave that because we know how important that is. All right? It teaches goal setting. When you are physically educated and you understand the business of education, you set goals. And you set your goals not too low. But, and you don't set them too high so that you can't attain them, but you set them realistic and achievable. Are you with me? Super Wonder Woman over here, she said that she planned the planification in order to read each hundred and odd students. You have to set goals and have your priorities right and take your, your, your vibes pill every now and again so that every morning you wake up. New and energize. I tell you one of the secrets for forget um, energy. Do you know? Watch this. Sure. May I borrow this? This is a bottle half filled with water. Are you with me? The water represents the energy. Yeah? So she starts out with half a bottle of energy. So them only go and deposit half a bottle more to fill this. Yeah? But if you empty all of the energy today, upon what you're doing, whatever hands find to do it with all their heart and do it with all their mind, yeah? And you deplete all of this. You see, when you go to your bed and wake up, it's one more seal buckler of energy you have. Morning by morning, the creator passed through and just fill you up again. Jesus have mercy. That, that, but, but we're gone with that. He teaches goal setting. So your, your athlete sets goals. You as the coaches set goals. You as a classroom teacher set goals. You as the administrator set goals to achieve a particular goal. Are you with me? All right? Um, build social skills. Physical education and sport does that. I, I, I greeted this lady in a very special way this morning. I embraced her. Yeah. And I embraced a few folks. And I shook a few folks on. Yeah, man? Yeah. Because the vibration right. Are you with me? We are socializing. We build friendships. Friendship that will not only be etched today and tomorrow disappear. No, we've been friends for like four years and going. Eh? Beautiful. Yeah, man. And we are not even from the same planet. Yeah? <laughs> but the friendship just... Them have one glue. Them call them super glue, you know. Why you try that? It, it, yeah. So physical education develop bonds of friendship that will last a lifetime. Are you with me? Yeah, man. And, and so we talk about leadership skills. Oh, God Almighty, the world needs leaders. And physical activities and sports identify leaders. Do you know that it is not the great things that you do that makes you a great leader. But it is the ability to inspire others to do greater things. Vital. So we must now inspire the next generation to do even greater things than we would have accomplished in our own lifetime. Are you with me? Leadership is important because we all need guidance and direction. And with Good leadership skills, we can accomplish anything. Anybody know that we can accomplish anything if we unite and come together? 
All right, you better believe that. Decision-making skills. We alluded earlier to the pragmatic approach on the field of combat, decision-making skills, how you make the decision is important. Are you with me? But you have to train and practice. Physical education gives you the ability to do that. What is your philosophy? I can do all things. That's one of mine. And you can. Hard work makes sense. Beautiful, beautiful. Do the work and stop chatting. The last one there, we focus on that a little bit. Mensana in Kapasana. Latin. Sound mind in a sound body. Those who are fastodians, we are proud of this man. We boast that, boy, we recognize that we twin. M my hand is a twin. So the palm belongs to the same as the back. Are you with me? But guess what? It's a sound mind in a sound body. I, I tell folks that if you are physically fit, you are better able to concentrate and do your academic discipline than if you are unfit. All right? It is the truth. Moving, moving, moving right ahead. Do you know that we are moving fast? Anybody remember yesterday we talked about things fall apart? Huh? And we found in that book it says things fall apart because they are not held together at the center. How am I doing with time? How am I doing with time? Things fall apart. Huh? All right. Things fall apart. Thing, this is the glue that holds things together. GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport. So GC Foster College, Jamaica's success, coaches in every era, in every sporting discipline that we participate in, we train them at GC Foster College. We deploy them. So the, 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 the anatomical knowledge, the motor learning, the, 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 the history and development, the, the, the sports management component, all of that, we train them and we, we send them out. And we send them out to do what? We send them out to proclaim a gospel. Not the gospel of Jesus Christ, but the gospel of physical education and sport and its many benefits. You here in Trinidad and Tobago, yeah? Once you whet your appetite, man, you must now create your own. Are you with me? So that you will be the spring, the reservoir of knowledge that can transform the landscape in sports. Culture and sport. We have seen the paradigm shift. You can't remove the culture from the people. Yeah? So your sports will reflect your culture. The culture will respect your sporting activity. Now we talk about lenses. I want to go there because guess what? In order for you to be successful, See if you can find a slide there with some lens looking at your arm. I think we have a, a slide there with some lens. You can find lenses, lenses, lenses. So the lenses, the lens. Ah, stop it right here. The lenses. Which lens are you viewing physical education and sports from? That is what will determine your highs and your lows. Ladies and gentlemen, I wear glasses, you know. Yeah. Even though I try to operate without it, but I, I, I wear glasses. And the, the, the eye doctor tell me that my lens, I have transitional lenses. So sometimes I see things dark. And sometimes I see things clear. Are you with me? Other transitional lens make you see things blue. And clear. But I am not talking about the transitional lens. I am talking about you. How do you view physical education and sport? How do you view its contribution to the next generation? Do you see it as a waste of time? As my mother used to say, you ram too much. And try to hide me away from my true destiny. And place me in a grammar school. Because I wanted to run. And to do sports. Are you with me? What lenses are you viewing this from? Tie your lenses in. With your motto. And it will make a difference. See if there's another. See if there's another thing there. So we... we 
we close it. This year sums up your reflection. What went well? And I am not asking you what went well with the presentation. I am asking you to, right where you are, go back to school in a lesson that you taught. Go back to school with the administration or coaching or teaching. Go back to that which you have already done and do a self-examination. Let a man or woman examine themselves and ask yourself the question, what went well? Those things that went well, document them. Make a note of it and said, I shall continue with these things. Those things that did not match up to your objectives, create a rubbish bin. Uh, you, you, you know, on the, on the, on the computer thing, you, you have a rubbish bin. You'll just put it there and you discard it. And it's just gone forever. So you need to get rid of some of the stuff then that did not go well and deal with it. What could be improved? So even though you have some stuff where they were done according to your, can they be improved? Are you with me? And, and so you go through specifically and then you decide now, how can I improve that which I already have? Are you with me? And once you do that, it's not only to do it now, you know. But you have to apply the thing. And then once somebody said, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to launch out, man. Are you with me? Launch out into the deep. Launch out. And then you are going to find out that you are not going to be just another physical education teacher or just another physical education coach, but you are going to be an extraordinary physical education coach, teacher, or administrator. Is everybody all right? I'm going to check you out now. I'm going to check you out now. Anybody can tell me. Tell me one of the motto that we quoted during the presentation. Come again. Learn all you've gone with it there, man. Put your hands together, man. Boy, them paying attention. Them paying attention. Them paying attention. All right, tell me something now. Tell me one of the nuggets for being a successful coach, administrator, or teacher. Launch out into the deep. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. What was it? Eh? Yeah, come again. Your hand went up. Say. Put your hand together, man. You make it look like I said. I don't want. Sure. Passion. 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 In closing, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something about passion. Passion, if it is not guided by the right principle and the proper information, is problem. Are you with me? But passion is definitely needed in order for you to go forward. Now, therefore, my brethren, go forward with passion. Launch out into the deep. Discipline yourself. And go and make some disciples of physical education and sport. Bless you.